Okay, everyone, in here are four of the best foods for lowering your cholesterol and lowering it fast. Now, are these the only foods that can lower your cholesterol? No, but this is what I know works because I have helped hundreds of people lower their cholesterol and improve their health, and I can help you too. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now, this video is part of my heart health series where we first learned how to understand our cholesterol results, like looking at the good and the bad cholesterol. We also learned about the different types of fat and the importance of fiber. So if you missed any of those videos, be sure to check them out after you watch this one. They're all available in the Heart Health video playlist series right here on YouTube. And I'll link them below in the description box as well. Now today we are going to look at the four ultimate cholesterol lowering foods that in particular have really strong cholesterol lowering capabilities. So if you're not adding them in, you're really missing out on a lot of potential. And we'll see later on that you could even reduce your cholesterol levels by 29%. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal what they are and some practical ways of adding them into your diet. I like to take an additive approach to nutrition where we focus on what we can add into our diet rather than looking at what we need to cut out. Now you don't need to add them in all at once. Start with one or two and gradually increase as you go. So the first ultimate cholesterol lowering food in this case is oats and barley. So technically two foods, but in this case, both of these foods have a special type of fiber known as beta glucans. Now, any type of food that contains this type of fiber is excellent at lowering cholesterol, but oats and barley are really good sources. These beta glucans work by forming a gel in the gut, which can bind with cholesterol rich bile acids and stop them from being absorbed into the body. They are a sticky fiber that acts like a magnet or like a moth, and it grabs onto cholesterol in your small and large intestine, sweeping it all the way through your digestive tract and taking it out with your stool. So in essence, you poo out the extra cholesterol. Now beta glucans are found in other greens, but in much smaller amounts. So oats and barley really are fantastic sources. And the research shows that three grams of beta glucans per day can reduce your total and your LDL cholesterol by five to 10%. So how much do you need? You need to get three grams of beta glucans per day to see this effect. And you can do this by having three servings of any of the following foods. So a small bowl of porridge, one or two teaspoons of oat bran, 250 mils of an oat drink, one oat breakfast biscuit, or one serving of an oat-based breakfast cereal, three oat cakes, recipes with at least 30 grams of oats per serving, 75 grams of cooked pearl barley, or 40 grams of barley flakes. So my top tips here are, I encourage my clients to try and have a bowl of porridge for breakfast or else overnight oats. You can make overnight oats the night before and you can make a few servings at a time so they're really easy to just grab in the morning with no fuss. I have a full article over on my website about how to make overnight oats and make them in a way that's really delicious and you're going to be excited for your breakfast when you wake up in the morning. The oat brand then is something that you can simply just sprinkle over your porridge or your cereal or some yogurt as well in the morning. Oat cakes then like this. These make a really nice snack. They're great with things like an almond butter or a hummus and something that you can have with a cup of tea. Then the barley often comes in packages like this and you can add it into things like stews, casseroles and soups. And you can even use it in risotto instead of rice. It's just about getting creative in the kitchen. And there's lots of recipes now that use oats in them. For example, I have a recipe on my website that is these veggie burgers where oats is one of the key ingredients to get the burger to bind together. So that's a really good way of getting more oats into your diet again. I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support me to continue making more videos. And don't forget to give the video a like or a thumbs up too. Now, the next best food to lower your cholesterol is soy. I just have a black tofu here. So soya foods covers quite a lot. It can include things like eating edamame or soya nuts. They're most commonly used in things like alternatives to dairy. So soya based milks, soya based yogurts or puddings as well. Soy is also used to make the tofu. And this is commonly used in plant based burgers or plant based meats. Finally, soy based products can also be fermented and used to make things like tempeh or miso. So there really is a lot of soy based foods out there now and ones that taste great too. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to soy, there has been a lot of myths about soy foods in recent years. 
which has made many people a little bit scared of taking them. So before I explain how soy can help with your cholesterol, let's clear up some of the misconceptions. Will soy give you man boobs? Men do not need to worry about soy and its impact on their testosterone levels. A big analysis published in recent years showed that soy consumption has no impact on testosterone or estrogen levels. And this analysis included over 41 human trials. So no, you do not need to worry about growing man boobs. The next concern is soy safety for women with breast cancer or at risk of developing breast cancer. And yes, soy is safe for breast cancer sufferers, for women at risk of breast cancer or at risk of recurrence. Its safety is supported by leading global cancer organizations like the American Institute of Cancer Research, for example, or the World Cancer Research Fund. In fact, several studies actually show that the consumption of soy not only does not raise the risk of breast cancer, some studies even indicate a slight reduction by about 10 to 20 percent and there's also evidence to suggest that starting to consume soy as a teenager and then continuing to consume it during adulthood has an even more significant impact in reducing a risk of developing breast cancer and on the topic of women's health soy can help with menopause so consuming two servings of soya a day has been associated with a reduced frequency and severity of hot flushes during menopause soy is different to other beans and pulses they have a much lower carbohydrate content and they're higher in protein content and quality and they are significantly higher in healthy fats mainly polyunsaturated fats so foods then that are made from soybeans tend to be low in saturated fat and using these in place of other high saturated fats in your diet can help you maintain a healthy blood cholesterol and soya isoflavins have also been associated with improved flexibility of blood vessels like your arteries which is important for blood flow. And we know this is good for heart health. We want all the blood and all of the oxygen flowing to your heart, flowing to your brain, so you don't get a heart attack or a stroke. Food labeling authorities in the UK, the United States, Japan and Canada and more have approved statements that including 25 grams of soy protein per day can help reduce blood cholesterol levels. And studies show that it can lower LDL cholesterol by about three to 4%. Thankfully now there is a huge choice of soy foods and many that taste really good too. It's best to start with one or two servings a day and then try to build up to three if you can. Examples of servings would be 100 grams of marinated tofu pieces. These are great in salads or stir fries or just had on the room with a dip and you can buy them pre-prepared. Like for example, the cauldron marinated tofu pieces. 100 grams of firm tofu, 100 grams of soy mince. You can use the soy mince instead of minced meat in recipes for like lasagna or chili con carne. 80 grams of edamame, 35 grams of soy nuts, a large glass of soy milk or something like a soya yogurt or a soya pudding or custard pot. But for many people, beginning to consume more soy can be a challenge, as it's a food that many of us are not very familiar with. I myself didn't really know how to use tofu at the start. And if you don't know how to use it correctly, it can be quite soggy and bland. So some of my top tips for getting more soya into your diet is to look out for the frozen edamame beans. These are already shelled and they're really easy to eat once you have them heated and defrosted. When it comes to tofu, if you are planning on using it in a stir fry or a baked tofu or any dish where you want it to maintain its structure or its shape, look out for a firm or an extra firm tofu and press it beforehand as well to remove any additional water. Tofu in the air fryer is amazing and I have a recipe on my website for that. And it's a really cheap protein source as well. I live in Bermuda and it's almost $20 for two chicken fillets, where it's only $5 for a block of tofu. Tofu can also be a really good way of getting in more calcium into your diet if that's a nutrient of concern for you. You just need to check that the tofu that you're buying you need to look at the ingredient list and make sure that it is set with something like calcium sulfate or calcium chloride. Some of them are not, they're set with other setting agents, which is fine, but they're just not going to contribute to the calcium like this one does. And finally, if you are on thyroid medication, soy can make it harder for your body to absorb that medication. Now you don't need to avoid soy, just make sure to leave a two hour gap between your medication and soy foods and do not take soy supplements. Now my third ultimate cholesterol lowering food is nuts. Here I have some almond nuts. Nuts are packed full of many heart healthy nutrients like protein, fiber, plant stenols, vitamin E, magnesium, zinc and potassium to name a few. And because they are also naturally rich in unsaturated fats and low in saturated fats, they can help lower cholesterol as part of a healthy diet. And there are so many different types of nuts to choose from. And adding a small handful into your daily diet can lower your cholesterol by three to 5%. The benefits enough were clear enough for the FDA in 2003 to issue a qualified health claim for peanuts and certain tree nuts. The claim states that eating a diet that includes one ounce of nuts daily can reduce your risk of heart disease. Some people avoid eating nuts as they are concerned about the high calorie content and a fear of weight gain. 
but research suggests that eating nuts can actually help manage your weight. Nuts contain high amounts of fiber and their structure makes it difficult for the body to break down. For example, if you went to buy a packet of almonds in the shop, as per the packet, it would tell you that it has around 170 calories. But we actually know that your body only absorbs about 129 calories, so you're not consuming all of the calories that they contain. So a handful of nuts is the optimum amount to eat each day, or 30 grams. Some people have bigger hands than others. Try to choose unsalted nuts, and if possible, choose nuts where the skin is still intact because that will have more nutrients. So some easy ways to get more nuts into your diet would be to add them on top of things like your overnight oats, your porridge on top of yogurt. They're also great in stir fry dishes and salads. You can even add the peanut butter onto the oat cakes and there you're doubling up on your cholesterol lowering foods. Try just having a handful of nuts as a snack or adding chopped nuts into home baking and things like muffins, bread, granola, or energy balls. In cooking, cashews, peanuts, and sesame seeds work really well in things like stir fries. And walnuts and pine nuts work really well in pasta dishes or salads. And you can also add a spoon of nuts into things like smoothies or cereal. My final cholesterol lowering food is plant stanols and sterols. These are substances that are found naturally in plants that have a chemical structure similar to that of cholesterol. And nutritional scientists have found that if they are taken in large quantities, they are clinically proven to lower cholesterol. But they are only found naturally in plants in very small quantities. So what food companies have done is they have taken other foods like your yogurt drinks or your milk and your spread, and they have added big doses of these plant stanols and sterols into them. And they can now sell these products with the claim that they are clinically proven to lower cholesterol. Because they are, there's a huge amount of research behind them. And therefore, it's no surprise that guidelines in Europe and internationally recommend that people with high blood cholesterol include plant stanols and sterols as part of an overall eating plan to help lower their cholesterol. Benicol and Flora Proactive are examples of brands that retail many of these products. But many stores have their own, own brands now too. And although these plant stanols are found naturally in foods, you really do need to be going for these fortified foods to get the therapeutic dose. Just to put this into perspective, you would need to eat 7,500 grams of broccoli every day to come close to the same amount of plant stanols or sterols in one of these fortified products. And I don't know about you, but that's a lot of broccoli. So how do they work? They have the ability to partially block cholesterol from being absorbed into the bloodstream from the gut. And this is for both cholesterol that we make in the body and from cholesterol that we eat in our diet. Normally about 50% of cholesterol is absorbed from the digestive tract into the bloodstream. But when plant stanols are taken, it drops to about 20%. So you need to eat 1.5 to 3 grams of plant sterols every day for at least three weeks to see the effect. And this needs to be part of a low saturated fat diet to help lower your cholesterol. I always say to clients to check the label of each product to see how many plant sterols it contains. Many of the yogurt drinks, for example, now will nearly have two to three grams in one product. So you only need to take one yogurt drink a day. But if you're getting your plant sterols from spreads or from milk, you might need to take a bit more. Current products provide anything from 0.5 to two grams of plant sterols per serving. It's also clear from the evidence that as the quantity increases, so if you're getting closer to that three grams per day, the benefits also increase. After that three gram mark, there doesn't seem to be any more of a difference. So it's not advised to exceed over those three grams of plant sterols per day. And like, let's be frank, these products are really expensive. <laughs> So consuming more than the three grams of plant stanols and sterols per day is unlikely to lower your cholesterol any further. But what we do know is that if you take them at the right dose for two to three weeks, they have the potential to lower your cholesterol by seven to 10%, which is really significant. However, the cholesterol lowering effect, it can differ from person to person. So for some clients, these products work insanely well, and for others, they don't work that well at all. So if you can, and a good way of doing this is getting your cholesterol levels checked, then starting to take the products at the right dose for at least three weeks. And during this time, try not to make any other changes to your diet. And then if you have the means to, get your cholesterol levels checked again and see, has there been an impact? If there has, then this is great. You should continue to take them. But if there has not been any impact, then it might be worth weighing up the pros and cons. You might be better off investing your money into something else. If they do work for you, you do need to continue taking them. The effects will stop when you stop taking them. And my last tip when it comes to these is that you need to be consuming them with your main meal. They're, that's how they're designed to work. They work by mixing with the food that you have eaten. Just having one of these drinks in the morning on its own isn't gonna be as good as if you have it with your main meal. And there we have it, the four best cholesterol lowering foods. So in summary, we had beta glucans from our oats and our barley, and these have a cholesterol lowering effect of five to 10%. 
Then we had our soy foods, which can potentially lower your cholesterol by three to 4%, and your nuts, which can lower your cholesterol by 5%. And lastly, of course, the plant stanols with an effect of seven to 10%. Sum it all up, and you could potentially lower your cholesterol by 29%. That's a lot. If you have made it this far in the video, I want to let you know about my free recipe ebook, which I have linked below in the description box. And there's lots of recipes in there that can help you with lowering your cholesterol. I want to thank you very much for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.